Hello, this is Telecom TV. I'm talking with Thorsten Robrecht of Nokia and Dan Rodriguez of Intel. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Thanks for being with us. If I could begin with you, Thorsten, if I might. Um, from your perspective, what do you think the difference is between 5G versus prior and other technologies? 5G means for the industry a real disruption. So it's not just a continuation of a 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, right? 2G brought us some kind of a voice connectivity, 3G brought us a kind of basic data connectivity, uh, 4G brought the real data into the mass market in this, in an efficient way. 5G will bring us the connectivity of the industry. And therefore, it's a total new game of where the network evolves into a total new architecture and a totally new game of new business opportunities. That makes a lot of sense, Dorson. When we look at 5G, we do think of much beyond just mobile broadband use case. We think about all sorts of use cases across multiple industries, everything from industrial automation to augmented and virtual reality, which is actually standing right behind me, uh, to smart cities. And the, the, I think the common theme or the common difference across all those use cases, they all have different bandwidth expectations, different capacity strains in the network, as well as different latencies. So when we think about 5G, we think the network definitely needs to go through a transformation to more flexible, intelligent network where you can really place and run workloads anywhere, anytime across the network to truly unlock the economic value of 5G. Second one for you as well, Torsten. How do you see the network evolving to support new business opportunities for all players? On the 5G side, we see now on these new business domains, especially the verticals coming up. And it's especially about the industrialization, about the shopping malls, about the connectivity around the industrialization, up to the kind of self-driving cars and the car industry. What we see this year at Mobile World is a lot of cars running around in every second stand somehow. So 5G will enable a lot new of these type of verticals. The networks need to evolve in this one. They bring a total new experience on the latency, which is significantly below what we see today on the LTE networks. And it will bring much more bandwidth for the wings, which is required on the bandwidth, like for the connected car on the massive uh, MIMO, massive confirmation. Makes sense, Thorson. Uh, one concept within 5G as well as the industry is a concept called network slicing. So when you think about all those use cases and the flexibility and intelligence required, and you think about those vertical specific use cases, we, there's, there's a concept called network slicing, which essentially guarantees a slice of the network, if you will, to ensure you can meet the operator's SLAs for specific use cases. So it should create a lot of new business opportunities that can be tailored to new markets. And how do you see the network changing to make 5G a reality for the entire industry? So the networks are changing today, which is often misunderstood or probably not very clearly articulated. The operators are going to evolve or are evolving as we speak the networks into the 5G area. For sure we all know that it's still a little bit of time together with Intel, what we are working on, to get the chipset and the real ecosystem running there. But before the radio interface steps in, we start from the core because it's not only radio 5G, it's a full transformation of the network in order to have the low latencies and the massive bandwidth, you really need to have it differently there, right? Absolutely, I, I, I can't agree with Thorsten anymore. If you look at the network side of 5G, we can really start investing in the network now to prepare for 5G. As I mentioned earlier, you think about a network that's more flexible, highly intelligent, and agile, and the way to do this is to move towards network transformation now with concepts such as network function virtualization as well as mobile edge computing, which allows you to, again, place these workloads where you need it and intelligent workloads throughout the network. So how are Intel and Nokia working together within the wider industry to ensure the benefits of an ecosystem that can be leveraged by and create new business opportunities for all the players that there are. So when you think about our strategy as a company, we are promoting programs such as Network Builders, where we are truly bringing in a plethora of ecosystem players together, all in, all in the names of network transformation and building a sturdy path uh, towards 5G. We're investing, of course, in technology and Intel. We're also investing in many different open source projects, uh, such as the, our, the Data Plane Development Kit, which is a packet processing uh, set of libraries that optimize performance on general purpose architectures. Also investing in other open source efforts, such as HyperScan uh, for deep packet inspection and other efforts like that. So when you think about 5G and you think about us and where we're on this journey, it's truly about bringing all the players together and figuring out a way to deliver that more intelligent network down the road. Absolutely, right, it needs to be open. 
It needs to be open in order to accelerate into the industry. It will not happen if we just, we both are working together. So as well, the Nokia strategy resonates 100% what we are doing there, right? It must be an open standard, must be an open platform, and then on top of it, for sure, we bring our secret source, our differentiation, our capabilities of the both companies into it, but then everybody is an ecosystem play. We need to have a full ecosystem play to really run it into the industry. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed.